Hello again, it's me, the guy from that other video where we accidentally made a tank TD game. And you, you are watching this video right now. Right now, at this moment, you are watching this video that I recorded in the past. If you think about it, I'm actually speaking to you from the past right now. We are breaking the space-time continuum, you and I. Okay, let's get on with it. In this video, we're looking at how we made the building system for our game. How's that for an intro? <laughs> So if you remember, we're two guys trying to make our first real prototype of a game where you have to defend a base against oncoming waves of enemies. You're controlling a tank that you can use to kill the enemies, but also you can build and upgrade your base to defend against the waves. Since the last video, we actually got four subscribers. Wait, we lost one already? Crazy! And also one person joined our Discord, Theta Helion. This was a fantastic event. We talked for hours in the Discord, showed each other our Blender models, and laughed and cried into the night. We will always remember Theta Helion, the first Discord member, the first subscriber. Theta, you were our first, and we will never forget you for that. Thank you so much for being gentle with us. Okay, we have spent quite some time figuring out how to make the building system for this game because there's not a lot of tutorials out there on this. And so we had to figure out a lot of stuff ourselves. So we thought it might be helpful to you guys if we explained how we have done. First, I'll go through our thoughts about the functionality and gameplay aspects as well as the visuals. And then I'll talk a little bit about how it actually works under the hood for those of you that might be interested in that. So like with most other things in game development, when we started on this, we thought, well, this is going to be easy. We're just going to watch some tutorials, slap some building system code together and make a few models and bada bing bada boom, I'm done. No, just no. First question that arose was how we were actually going to place the buildings. At first we went with the grid. And it was not because that was the only tutorial we could find on YouTube. It was a very well thought out decision. We had meetings and diagrams and all of that shit. True story. I can actually really recommend the Code Monkey tutorial on the grid building system that we totally first saw after making the decision. Link in the description. We had a hard time getting this to work like we wanted. mainly because we didn't really understand the code we were working with. Quick tip though, if you're trying to figure out how someone else's code works, just get in there and start ripping stuff out and see what happens. Seriously, it's a very quick way to get an idea on what does what. Our main issue was actually getting the visuals to work. We wanted the grid to react when you hover the building over it and when you place the building on it. This again was a bit too challenging for my very limited math skills and in the end, after getting it to sort of work actually, we looked at each other and asked ourselves, does this grid actually add anything to the gameplay? It gives us, as game designers, some more control over where the player can place things and that makes things a little bit easier. On the other hand, the grid itself was not very easy for us to work with. It also makes it easier for the player to place things in alignment with each other, so people with OCD will also enjoy the game. Heavy. On the other hand, making the player placement more free would give the player way more opportunity to be creative with the design of their base. It also gives way to a lot more cases for breaking the game in some way that we have to try to anticipate. In the end we went with the free form placement, not at all because it was just the easiest for us to understand how to get to work. Not at all. All. For the UI, we went with this bar of icons at the bottom of the screen that then spawns these hovering information tables when you hover over a building icon. This is actually made so that whenever we add a new building, the icon and information table is automatically added. Pretty cool if you ask me, and I'm glad that you do. 
For rotating the buildings, we went with the functionality that we remembered from Command and Conquer Generals, where when you press to place the building, if you hold down the mouse button, you can then rotate the building by dragging the mouse. Before clicking, you can rotate the building by pressing R in 90 degree intervals. We had some discussion about whether this way of rotating buildings was intuitive or not. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments and in the discord. When it came to building the defensive walls, we went through some different iterations. Remember now, we only started learning how to make games about a year ago and I, as the main programmer, had no experience with this sort of thing. And as I mentioned in the last video, I am not that good at math. So when it came to making a system where you have to snap a lot of wall pieces together in the right direction, calculating their exact positions in 3D space in relation to each other and the mouse cursor position, I started with this. In this system, you just scroll the mouse wheel to extend the wall out in the direction you have rotated it and then you click to place it. The walls don't snap together. Actually, you were forced to place them with some distance to each other so they wouldn't collide. It worked. That's the best I can say about that. It worked most of the time. And after that, I tried to add a snapping effect so you could at least snap these scrolled out walls together. And at the end, I actually got it to work exactly well, exactly as you would expect a wall building system to work, basically. Then we began adding some more additional buildings. So we had a scrap wall and a scrap tower. The thought here was that these were just built from whatever could be found laying around in the middle of the desert. Then as you earn money, you can buy more expensive materials to make your buildings from, because of course someone is paying you to kill these enemies that are coming at you, and they have a building material hotline where you can order airdrops of concrete and steel. God, we need help with this story. <laughs> so continuing in this military style, we made this new tower a mortar, mo Mo, mo, a mortar, mo, I don't know how to pronounce that in English, a mortar grenade launcher thingy and a concrete wall. We also added a radar thinking that maybe this would have some utility like giving you a mini map where you can see which direction the enemies are coming from. Towers have AI that I made with behavior designer. By the way, I'm thinking about making a video about how we made all of our AI in the game. Let me know if you would be interested in that in the comments or in the discord and say hi to Theta Helion if you join. They basically just find the closest enemy and focus on them. They can be aggravated though if an enemy shoots at the tower. They will actually do this while being placed as well which we had a lot of fun with. So now for how it actually works. In the scene we have a building manager object and a building ghost object. The building manager holds all of the buildings and the scripts for selecting, rotating and placing the buildings. The building ghost is actually the object that this building preview is attached to. So when I choose a building from the UI, a preview is instantiated or spawned as a child object of this building ghost object. Then the building ghost object follows the mouse position. When I click to place the building, I actually spawn an entirely new object on the position where the preview was and destroy the preview object. Every building has a preview object and then the object that you actually build. All of the buildings are scriptable objects, so I can easily create new buildings. A scriptable object is just something that Unity has that is an object you can create that has certain properties. So I can make a type of scriptable object that is called a building and the building has has a name, a description, a thumbnail for the UI, text for the UI, a level, a cost, some health, the two different 3D models as described, range and damage and so on. Once this is made, you can create new buildings with a few clicks and now you just have to fill out all of the information on the scriptable object and make the 3D models of course. But the great thing is that all of your scripts now knows how to access this information on any building that you create. The walls are another story. They are all also scriptable objects, but they have this little checkbox check that means that the building system will treat them differently. So instead of just placing and rotating them, you have the whole snapping and dragging functionality. I'm not going to go into detail about how that works, because then this video would become way too long. If anyone wants to know exactly how it works, let me know in the comments or join the Discord. I will be happy to show you. Basically, the walls have empty game objects attached to them that are the snapping points. 
And so you snap the walls together by accessing the positions of these objects and then setting the position of the wall pieces to this position. So now that we have some real buildings and a real building system, we can continue on this journey of making this game. In the next video, I'll go through how the tank controller works because Theta Helion asked about it in the Discord. If you would like to see that or follow our journey, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and join the Discord, throw a like on a video and all of that shit. And remember, video games melt your brain.